So welcome, Courtney Friel. Thank you. Thank for you having for me. coming out and um, talking a little about your recovery on Recovery Today. And I know that um, I've gotten to do a little bit of background from you <laughs> and see that you're coming up, God willing, on 10, ten years. 10 years, September 9th. That's amazing, right? Yeah, it feels, it feels really good. So, I love recovery. <laughs> I love sobriety. I feel like I've landed some secret to life and that's why I'm open to sharing about it. Well, and you would never know. And, and That's what I hear all the time. The, I didn't know. I had no idea that um, my life was going to become so magnificent for the most part. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. I, just, I just did what they told me in the beginning. And I don't think it got to the... Uh, they say you have a pink cloud in the beginning. I mm -hmm. think like I'm on the pink cloud in these last few years. Like it just keeps getting better and better, but it doesn't necessarily get better <laughs> right away. No, no, it takes. But a it's minute. interesting you mentioned. Oh, I'd have no idea because someone just wrote a comment on one of my Instagram posts. Like, I don't understand why you keep you know wearing all these sober shirts and talking about your past. Like you're past that now and your followers would have no idea and you you know you have a successful life and and why do you have to keep bringing it up all the time and reminding us you're not that person anymore. <laughs> people don't get it. Yeah. <clears throat> and I and I'm so glad that people are talking about it nowadays. You know, it's I don't believe our recovery belongs in a church basement. Exactly. You know, on a Thursday night, and especially. Plus, there are other ways to have a sober lifestyle besides just a twelve-step program. For sure. And and I think that's the key is drawing from. I draw from a bunch of different avenues that keep me sober. Well, what what do you? Um, so I was looking at some of the things that we wanted to talk about. Okay. And what is your daily? like your recovery routine that um, <laughs> you have one uh well i meditate every single day yeah i pray non-stop i listen to k love radio <laughs> <laughs> the christian music <laughs> channel and i have a lot of things that just keep me sober i mean i do go to meetings still and i not as much as i would like to because i'm i'm super busy um i mean work at ktla as a news anchor and reporter is you know a more than 40 hour a week job i have two kids seven and eight um and so i'm a single mom uh, half the time like i've had 50 50 custody of them but so i'm busy you with have that a full too plate. yeah and i'm trying to um i just finished a book proposal on like how to do shit sober that's kind of the premise of the book and it focuses a lot more on um life in sobriety, how I got through things like divorce sober, dating sober, having fun sober, career, and like the stressful death stories that I cover, like how I deal with that and meditation. And obviously you'll, you'll get like the 15 year party career and what rehab was like and everything. But I feel like so many books out there right now are just like, oh, here's all the crazy shit I did. And here's what rehab was like. And then I got sober, the end. And you're like, is this person even sober? Or how long has this person been sober? Because I feel like people rush to write these books the second they get out of rehab. It's like, what do you even know really at that point? Like, Not much. And, and you think you know a lot though. Right, well, I mean, <laughs> right. you're definitely ahead of the game. A lot of people won't even go to an AA meeting or won't even go to um, uh, rehab. So it, you should be proud of any step I think that you can get, like any day of, any day of sobriety that you can get is, is better than not what was your it. first day when you're in rehab? What, your first night? Oh gosh! But, uh, I always say the first week of rehab and the first week of my divorce were the two worst weeks of my life, <laughs> and I never want to be back in either of those places again. But uh, just I, I've never been so broken and vulnerable and feeling shameful, but also hopeful too. Like, okay, I'm gonna do this because. When I w woke up to seven people around my bed interventioning me and they were asking me to go to rehab, I was grateful for that opportunity and I knew I deserved more for my life. And it wasn't really like, yeah, do outpatient or go start going to meetings. It was like, no. no, like my husband was like, you need to go at the time. He was like, you need to go um, to rehab inpatient or we're getting divorced. And at first I was like, F you. Like, <laughs> and I remember he came and talked to me first 
And then he went down, and I was like, ugh, whatever, because I was so hungover, of course. <laughs> I mean, my friends, like, they couldn't even wake me up. I had, like, passed out on the living room floor, taking, like, such a combination of different things, and they were really scared. Yeah. So then... You scare people a lot. Yeah, then they came up and all gave me different reasons. Like, I had a pair of coworkers there. I had a pair from high school, a pair from college, who knew me through, like, oh, yeah, all the different... Full yeah, Monty because we were, at, we were staying team, huh? at my parents' Florida house for Labor Day weekend in 2009. And what they had to say just really convinced me to go. It was kind of like, you've been so stressed. I worked at Fox News Channel at the time, and I was just go, 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 nonstop. And my whole life was work and partying. I was work hard, play hard person. Yeah. Um, but I just needed a break. I mean, it's kind of almost like a mental breakdown too. But I knew in that moment that saying yes, I knew not only did I deserve more for my life, but that it was going to be the best thing that I could do for my life. And I'm so glad that I did it and was smart enough to realize. But things obviously had led up to it. Yeah. Uh, in the weeks prior, I had had, you know, so many embarrassing moments, blackouts and video of my seeing video of myself totally messed up like realizing oh my gosh that is dangerously messed up that was shocking it's kind of funny me. after you get uh, sober and you look there was some some moments that i would think about memories that i had that would jolt me and i would go and i would say to myself are you kidding me you were you were doing that right and and it was and i know the first night in rehab i was sitting on a bench thinking, how did this happen? I can't believe this happened to me because I was fighting it so hard and I didn't even know that I had anything wrong. And, and, but when I arrived, and I, I don't know if this is true for you, it was like I let my breath out and I go, because I couldn't, I couldn't, figure, couldn't figure out what to do <laughs> and I needed something bigger than me to help. Yeah. And I fought it and fought it, but the I'm glad, you know, I'm glad we're bringing that up just because that was such, all I remember is like icky. Like I've never felt so horrible in my entire yeah. life. And I'm, I'm grateful that we can look back and remember that because I never want to be in that place again. Never. And, and I have, I have drug dreams a lot. And so it's, I just had my first one where I was having to go back to rehab. Like some, that was the first time in, oh, in a dream. <laughs> that's right? not a dream. That's a nightmare. Well, of course it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It's of course it's a nightmare. But every time I, I'm glad I still have those because when I wake up, I'm always like, oh, oh my yeah, god, yeah, you're just full of gratitude, god, right? I'm still sober. Because it's the same story each time. It's always like I'm doing it secretly. Mm -hmm. No one really knows. And then I'm like, wait, but I'm coming up on ten years and I'm writing a book and like now how I'm not going to be able to do that. And you know, it's yeah. sneaky. The, yeah. um, our disease, our mm -hmm. addictions are sneaky. Yeah. And sometimes, and I know when I had gotten around 10 years. Okay. How long do you have now? So I'm coming up on 15. Okay. And I get really, what's your date anyway? Oh, I, well, that's the other thing too that's super cool about my sobriety date because I, I guess people plan them every now and then, which I didn't know about. Uh -huh. When I checked in on September 8th, they were like, okay, well, tomorrow's your sobri sobriety date, which was 090909. 090909, 090909. Yeah. that's cool. I'm like, You're an 09er. Can't, can't mess that up. And the mine is uh, December 15th. Okay. And um, so. It's your, it's your golden birthday, and it's my golden birthday. Totally is. Nine on the 9th, 15. But on I the get 15th. weird around the five year times. Oh really? Yeah, sometimes. It, See, it I I find that my sober birthday is so much more important and special to me than my what do they call it belly button birthday? Way more. Like I just turned thirty nine, and I people were like, "Happy birthday!" I'm like, uh, "What are you doing for it?" I'm like, uh, "I'm at a double homicide right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like no. I'm working, so no plans. Like it was no big deal." I, I but but coming up, oh my gosh! Like my birthday this year is going to be turning ten. That will be great. That's huge. Yeah, it's so big getting in the double digits. Yeah, it's exciting. And to be able to be the example that went to rehab and stayed sober, mm -hmm. I like that. You know. Yeah, I did a lot of work, and I continue to do a lot of work. I'm a huge like self help person. Mm -hmm. I'm currently doing the 40 day miracle right now. I'm on today is day 39. Yeah, and it just 
every day you have to come up with a list of 10 things that you're grateful for, but not just like, oh, I have food and water and whatever. It's like, oh, I'm grateful that relationship didn't work out because this. I'm grateful I didn't get that job because this. Like, I'm grateful for that negative feeling or that bad habit or, you know, feeling like that because, and then you spin it to a positive. So it's, um, it's interesting, and I, I, as I'm coming up on, on the way up here, I just had like so many ideas of things I wanna do like in recovery. And I also, um, I think this week has been challenging for me reporting, because I had so, I've just, every single day, it's like a hit and run, you know. It's, it's death, people, it's I, dead people all the I time. I don't know and I'm like, how, it's well, like you're. I, I, I'm really having like a crisis, cause I'm like, what am I gonna do this for the rest of my life, like just cover Dead, dead people, like it's drilled in my head all yeah, the time. sadness and all of that. And I, I mean, was definitely about in the, rec you know, obviously in in addiction, that is out a part of it too. But that's why I want to focus on the positive side of things. And there's more to give than just like standing on a street corner talking about like someone who was, you know, sh killed and like. I mean, of course, that there are life too. That's important, and that story needs to be told. And we do need to, you know, try to. I I feel like I'm trying to help catch. But a it killer doesn't or necessarily. Like that have to be your lifetime right it's like i've done i've done that up you know my whole career so i don't know i was watching your reel <laughs> oh yeah and i was and it was all about that yeah. and i was sitting there thinking man because i know how it affects me and i know i'm are you em, i'm like an empath so <laughs> total empath. and that's why so many people i think in the news business are full-blown alcoholics or use things to escape because like it's it's icky and and in sobriety i've covered like i mean the vegas shooting i covered that non-stop for two weeks and i ended up i was there that night at that concert i wasn't at the concert oh, but vegas. i was driving to my friend's restaurant on the when i got the call that i, that I mean was. i just i'm like i always live in fear that every day i'm like please no mass shooting today like please no i mean even covering fires it's like you're with all these people who have lost their entire homes and I'm like forced to I live be in up, Malibu it be up in their face <laughs> yeah. so is your house okay <coughs> the I have a few and the only things that didn't burn was the house okay <coughs> which you know thank God because right. I also have some treatment centers that yeah, are yeah. in Westlake and where it came over the whole um every single thing burned except mm -hmm. for the house it, and it even broke the windows from the heat Right. But for whatever reason, they, they didn't catch on fire. And I had one house that had a solar um, thing for the pool, and the fire came on the solar thing and burnt holes in the solar mm -hmm. thing, which made the water spray the house, and so the house didn't burn down. Wow. And, but we had... Um, yeah, like, I mean, obviously, they're devastating. It's just like, it, I, I feel like it's getting to be a little too much, like, of just death and destruction all the time. Oh, my goodness. And so if I can find a way to <laughs> maybe shift to talk a little bit more about positive stuff in, in recovery, then th th I'm just speaking out loud here. It's just, it's just a thought that's currently going through my head. Well, it's a good thing. We've been doing a show for, I think, three years now, monthly show. And being able to give information that's useful to people in recovery has been, it became a passion mm -hmm. of mine. And, and yeah, we it's have more a lot meaningful, of, I'm sure. Yeah, we're doing, and it's kind of like, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure you experienced the shift. When, before I was in recovery, it was whatever I could get is what I was up to. I was, I was uh, let, me, let me see what I can get. And nothing was ever enough. And, there was a spiritual shift after I got sober and started doing the work that became to see what I could give. Oh, right. Isn't it amazing? It's like we're so selfish before mm -hmm. we get sober. And then you, you're like, oh, I'm supposed to give or how what is my purpose on life how, how can I help people and that comment that I was mentioning like clearly that person doesn't have any concept of wanting to help people because no. that's exactly what I wrote back like uh, my story is helping people here. yeah for sure it is <laughs> I, and I know when I was new and I would see people like you or I would meet famous people or p people that were doing stuff that had a lot of time I was sitting there thinking if that guy is doing this who am I not to do it? And, and I needed to, to not only hear the stories, but know that our, that we have that common bond on whatever, because when I went in, I thought I had a drug and an alcohol problem, and then they took them away, and then I realized I had problems. Right. And I was going, oh man, 
I don't want to have problems like, right. you know, anxiety or depression mm -hmm. or these kind of things. And I didn't want to have feelings, or no. as I call them, feelings. <laughs> no, I didn't want to feel anything. Yeah. And, and that's why when I was looking at your reel, and, and especially when you say you, that you're empathic, which I think a lot of us are, mm -hmm. I was sitting there thinking, going, man, I don't know how, how it would be to be able to, to feel that in the day mm -hmm. and then be able to shift your energy. And then you have young kids. It made me really happy to see that my kids were very young, thank God, when I got, and I moved from Vegas to here. Okay. So they, don't they remember don't, you as uh, no. They don't remember see, when I was really bad. My kids were born bad. like that was. I always say like they're the the, the blessing, one Such of them a blessing. because I didn't even want kids. You know, I was all about me and my career yeah. before, and so then when I was sober, I was like, well, I guess it would. It's more of a conducive lifestyle to have children, and then I had no idea how much I was going to enjoy them so much. So they have never seen me. They know. They know too. Yeah. Mommy, mommy doesn't drink alcohol. My lip. My daughter doesn't really remember because she was about three, and then, and my son, he was about six, but it wasn't. I was hiding out by the time he was, you know, getting there. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest gift that we can give to him is to be present. Yes. And not just. I don't even know what it would have. I don't know it will, what it would look like, you know, the, because I, I walked around, I, I had what looked on the outside like a big life, right. but on the inside I was so miserable and unhappy, mm -hmm. and, and it was kind of like the, I wanted to be able to give good stuff to the kids, but I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that getting into recovery was going to be such a nice life. Right. And it has its ups and downs, don't oh, get me wrong. Yes. and and. I'm in the actual treatment world, world right. which has been, you know, with the opiate crisis, or, and I go and see a lot of programs that I do on the news, and I go to Congress and go out and, and try to visit with um, different politicians to make the change, because a lot of, and I know that in your business, you cover a lot about the opiate crisis, right. and, and if you were talking about the kids that we're losing on a daily basis, you could do a 12 hour show seven days a week. Right, but I still feel like we're not talking about it enough. Um, not enough at right. all. I think I and think we skip, because in the news we tend to not cover suicide, so I feel like it's kind of still looked, it, it, it still looked like a choice thing. Like, so, oh, that's, they killed themselves because they're, they didn't, they didn't stop. No, we're doing we're doing a documentary right now that's called because and you see all the opiate documentaries, all mm -hmm. the and they're kind of the same. But we're doing one that's called Death by Denial, and um, it is about because what people don't know is at the same time everybody is talking about this opiate crisis and all the kids that are dying and fentanyl mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. They're not talking about the fact that the insurance companies shorten the length of time for people to go to treatment and use insurance. Right, and, and that, the doctors prescribing. Well, no, that's a whole different segment. Right. I mean, where <laughs> everybody knows issue. the yeah. doctors prescribed, everybody got addicted. And I meet these kids that are beautiful kids that are a baseball player who hurt his arm and became a heroin addict. Right. And the, so we all know where it came from, whether they admit it or not, but what, what, blows me away is that the treatment for them is designed to fail. And so it was, we were able, maybe three or four years ago, we were able to, if we had somebody come in, we could have them basically stay for up to a year even if they needed. And the 20 to 22 year old heroin addict from, uh, you know, Schenectady, Mm -hmm. They can't go home and be the oddball with all of their friends on heroin. So we had developed these sober communities that had, some had up to 100 young people in them that were all doing the deal and working hard and doing good and they shortened the time and they quit paying for their treatment mm -hmm. until all of the money ran out. And I went and met Cong Sen Senator Booker and said, look, the I'm gonna have to make a Schindler's list here. The, the, there's 200 of these kids that are working hard, that are doing good, they're all sober, and they, and uh, 
they're not getting paid for. And uh, so said he was going to do all this stuff, and then he didn't. And um, mm -hmm. nothing happened. And I had to actually do that. And we were having so many funerals mm. that I couldn't finish one before it was another. And so advocating for that has become, um, and I know I'm just chatting right now. Yeah. <laughs> so the, um, because when, and, and also, though I have, I don't want to call it an agenda, but anytime I have somebody who's here who is a significant person, I want them to know this is going on because in this life now, I never know who I'm going to meet or right. who might know somebody or be able to do something to change this because these kids need help. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like the, um, and it's just kind of wrong for us. It's very hard for me to deal with my good life on one hand and not be able to help out who right. I wanted to, and I, I used a scholarship. And look, I, I mean, I know that I'm I'm blessed that I had good insurance at the time, and I went to Silver Hill in New Canaan, Connecticut, and it cost twenty five thousand dollars for thirty days there, and insurance paid seventeen of it, so I had to pay eight grand. Now looking back, like it was the best eight grand I ever spent. Best money ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but also. And, and, I, and I'm lucky that Fox News Channel, like say what you want about their politics, and I always say this, like they were amazing to me. They didn't make me take any disability. I love those guys, or guys they didn't, on the record. They didn't make me, <laughs> That's well I, I do watched. too. I mean, maybe not politically, <laughs> but uh, they, you know, they were just, they were, I didn't have to take vacation days or sick days or anything. They were like, well, we're so glad that you're being proactive about this because we all know they've had to clean up some things after the fact. So mm -hmm. they're like, take what you need. To, you know, they let me take an extra week after, you know, they were really like light on my schedule and I was able to um, work a lot on my recovery. I mean, I did three months of outpatient after. Yeah, that helped a lot. I, I just, when For I went, too. when I went there, I just was like, look, I'm going to, because I know it's so much money, because I know now my bosses clearly know, um, and because it was like such a shocking thing to have to, to go through for a month of my life, like I'm gonna do this for at least a year. That's what I told myself. I was like, yeah. I'll do this for at least a year to be like legit. At That's it. so funny. And that I, was my same thing too, really? I, I swear. <laughs> I sat in the front row. I went to the extra real people meetings in town. Mm -hmm. I you know, asked questions and, um, now actually it's helpful because I'm I am going to write this book so I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I wrote all that stuff down because I'm finding like oh my god I remember I was feeling this then and I have proof of it uh, but it's also like when I look at that stuff because I kept a a box of the rehab stuff and I didn't open it until seven years later and so I've kind of been like every now and then looking through it and like I mean I have ball my eyes out when I look at that stuff so yeah. it's it's it, it is like you're a boss though to be able to do it you know uh -oh. that. On, uh, well, because all of these horrible things, the horrible stories of things that were done and, and how I could have died. And I mean, that's, I mean, not only is it giving credibility to my story to people who think that I, well, how could I ever have had an issue? But it is helping people out there. And I know that because I didn't come out publicly about it on my social media and stuff until I had six years sober. And I thought yeah. like that gave me at least enough credibility on the matter. Cause it wasn't like, I was like, I mean now on Instagram, there's people yeah, that are 30 like, days, oh, I'm yeah, good, they're, it's I, they're, awesome. they're like three days sober, you know, and yeah. they're posting about it. And then, I mean, I, and then they're like writing about their relapses and it just, you just don't put pressure on yourself like that right no. away, I don't think. But for you to be able to jump right back out and go to work even in a week, I couldn't even put, I know, I know. Well, that, that's uh, why it was extra tough for me because I had gone from like being on Fox News. I was on like between five to seven times a day. I mean, people were, there were articles written about how much airtime I was getting and <laughs> like just on all the different shows, seven days a week, I was working my butt off and then to come back and I, I was kind of like on the bench because producers, you know, taking six weeks off work, mm -hmm. producers switched, there was like different management shifting in that, in that time and new people came in and, 
And also I was kind of doing more entertainment at the time, which then it was a very political year. So um, that was tough because it was like my two loves were my career and my partying. And I had just lost both of them. Yeah, you're and then right all of a sudden, oh, oh. all of a sudden I have like, it's Groundhog's Day and I have all this free time and I don't know what to do with it. And every day seems like the same. And I'm like, oh, what do I do? I opened a club. It, it felt boring. It really did. And I, I and I wondered for a long time if I was going to be able to have fun again. And that's what I love to spread now. It's like, so it do you have does fun now? Not, oh, yeah, totally. I have mean, a blast. Yeah. And you remember everything and there's no drama. My best friend from college, I'm shocked, but not too surprised about it. She just called me two days ago and she and her husband realized they're alcoholics. They, you know, can't stop. I mean, I could have told them that probably, but I don't judge or preach or try to convert mm -hmm. anyone. Um, and they're realizing like, if they're going to stay together, like they both Gotta have get to get it together. Um, but I don't know, like I, they're not, so many people are like, I'm not going to go to rehab. Like I'm not going to, I can't put my life on hold. I mean, and it's harder with children clearly, but what would you do? What would programs are, and it, I think on mine now. I mean, I was listening to sober podcasts. Brandon Lee, you have to put him mm -hmm. escaping rock bottom. You have to interview him next. But I was listening to his sober podcast. I mean, there's so many people that are out and doing these podcasts and talking about it and posting on Instagram and writing articles. And that's like I'm so busy, but if I can contribute in any way, like I will, I will help that. You know, and 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 going back to putting it out there at six years, like that's the thing. I keep getting so many messages all the time about how I've inspired people to become sober, how yeah. they stay sober because of me. And thank you so much for spreading the word. And how did I do it? And how do I stay sober? And that's why I'm like, oh, I just need to write a book so I can say, read the book. For sure. So if you are too afraid to step into a program um, or you can't take away time for work, I mean, do, do, something online there's meetings you can listen to online i mean that that's that's my first do, do step you do advice. something how now how would when do you define somebody who needs help how do you define that? um well and i think this is what my girlfriend was kind of coming to the realization about that like i did like you can't you'd say okay i'm only gonna drink on the weekend or i'm only gonna you know drink once a week or whatever like that for sure does not work and the authorities <laughs> on the matter say you're supposed to what stop for a whole year and it's like normal people alcohol is like broccoli so yeah. they can take it or leave it it's not a big deal like i'm still baffled when i see people at dinner and they only like drink a couple sips of wine i'm like how is that even that. possible like and I, what was the point of ever having one drink like why have the calories yeah like, it was like to get messed up and then the second I would drink, I'd be like, let's get some Coke and then I need some pills. And that's why I know if I was to... People ask if me I was why to, I don't drink and I go, cause I like cocaine a lot. Oh. They go, <laughs> what, what does that mean? And I go, right. I know if I have a drink in my hand, I'm gonna have a bag of Coke in my hand. Oh, and eventually. for me, I knew it was a problem because sure. I, I remember thinking to myself, wow, like I was making sure I had my co cocaine lined up because I knew I was gonna be drinking. So I knew I was gonna be drinking and gonna want it. So I needed to make sure I got that first. And that's why I know if I was to start drinking again, it would be no different and I would be like, no. let's get some Coke, we're gonna get some Coke. And then, oh, oh no, I messed up my sobriety. So let me get back on my Adderall and let me get fucked up on Ambien because I love that shit. And like <laughs> The whole mess, the whole yeah, pocket I just, there's no, I'm just an all or nothing person. And that's what my friend realized. She's like, I'm an all or nothing person. But she was also like, court I've been drinking for 25 years this is my life and all of my friends are sober and every uh, so everyone in our neighborhood like every, sorry every, everyone drinks like she doesn't have any sober friends yeah so she's like everyone drinks everywhere I mean it is in the south and they drink a lot but uh, so she's scared she you know people are scared like uh, she's like I know for, but I, you're I, the I don't example think that, I know she's like I I wanted to reach out because I feel like you know I've never I will have fun in sobriety like it just seems so boring and yeah, that's what I'm trying to spread the message about. Like I can go to a dance club and dance for, you know, two hours and I'm like, sweet, I'm sweaty, got my workout, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and be like clear headed. Yeah, I'm the best time. And I can do it around people that are drinking and yeah. go and just knock yourself out. I don't care. Yeah, I don't I don't care either. I'm not gonna put myself like <laughs> my my boyfriend's like eighteen years sober and he went on a trip with um like a bunch of couples and they and like some, fam some famous people too. They were like on every kind of drug, 
for two days, like just mm -hmm. all messed up. I'm like, how did you do that? I don't understand. Like I like, and then he's still friends with all them. And once is always like, oh, let's go to, and we we go to the parties, their parties, like they're all messed up. And I'm like, I'm not having fun here. Like th yeah. that's a scene I'm not going to put myself into. I had to do kind of in and outs on those, you know, where I, I would just, pop in for right. a minute yes. and then I would be out. Right, and and that's, I mean, it's kind of, but isn't it freeing? I love that. Mm -hmm. It's like, sure, oh, you have a book party? Cool, I can come for an hour or two yeah. or I can have a, a dinner with you guys, but like when you guys start getting, you know, crazy, like then I'm Time gonna to leave. Go. Yeah, I'm gonna, I have other stuff and to Because do. I'm gonna wake <laughs> up, I'm gonna be fine. Exactly, and you're gonna show up for people in your life. And yeah. I don't know how people have kids and continue drinking, because I can't imagine just being like hung over on the couch all the time. I'm with like kids being like, mommy, 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 mommy. <laughs> like, you just, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know. There's so many of those things. It's hard enough when you're tired and they're like, mommy, 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 and you're sober. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if you're hung over and whacked out, and you know. And with reporting, oh my gosh, every single day I'm like so grateful I'm sober because I can't, I get thrown into these like complicated like, law, you know, court hearings or you know a court case that's been going on or something with like city council that's been going on or like these that I have to read like tons and tons of articles really fast and like be on there in an hour and I have to like have a really good comprehension level to find out like okay what's what are the main main points here and when it's got like history you're like ah this is so complicated keep it simple keep it simple keep it simple and I'm like thank god I'm not hung over oh yeah <laughs> I couldn't do anything you know there'd be days Oh yeah, you wake up at when the sun is setting, and mm -hmm. you're up until the sun comes up. That was my that was like every weekend for me. And then you know I'd be like strung out, and I feel like all skinny because I hadn't eaten in like a couple of days from doing coke. And then I <laughs> then I would eat an entire pizza and feel like crap. And then I'd be oh you're so like coke depressed or ecstasy depressed or alcohol alcohol is a depressant, so that depresses you. Your story ambient, is going to do so many people so good. Because they don't, nobody can see you like that. You know, you yeah, don't. Yeah, they're like, I can't imagine you. Well, yeah, you don't see So it. it's interesting because I actually had, remember I was talking about how I saw myself on tape uh, uh, like a year ago, my friend who had sent me the original video of me on a train with my bra on my head. <laughs> I had blueberry pie in my hair. I was so messed up. And that was the video I saw that I was, I was appalled. I look at it now, I'm like, okay, it was kind of funny, but not really. Like, I'm like, my eyes are rolling around. I'm snorting. I'm like flopping all over the place. People are looking at me. We were on a train, so they were looking at me like I was this awful person, which at the time I was like, oh, I'm so hilarious. But then I didn't even know that I had taken that video. So it was slurring. And it was, but I have that video, and I'm willing to share it. So when I come out with the book, like I'll use it in like promotional stuff because that that like and my book editor watched it and she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm laughing like people people still tell me they're like you were a really pleasant drunk. Like I, I had a lot of fun. I was a lot of fun. I was I had like a Christian upbringing, so I never was like like stealing or anything. I mean, except for prescription pills, of course. But like, <laughs> I, I feel like I still had like a decent compass, moral compass while I was using. Mm -hmm. But it just gets to a point where you're like, How, all right, I'm gonna be 30. Like I can't be like blacking out all the time, dancing on bars with like, I lo on my wedding night, I like lost the bottom of my dress and my shoes, didn't even have sex with my husband. We got in a huge blowout fight. I was like looking for Coke. After coming off a two week Coke binge, I was like, I drank 22 drinks on my wedding day. Yeah, that's not how it's supposed to go. No, that's it's not, definitely not. Not how it's supposed to go. But we do that, you know, that's yeah. just kind of, I, I don't know, <laughs> except for I'm just glad that that's not a part of life anymore. Oh, I know. And, if, I, and that's can be why, a good example. Why wouldn't you share the most like important sacred thing? Like, I don't, I mean, yeah. to each his own, like not, people can keep it private and I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm not going to out anybody, whatever. But like for me, because I'm such like a um, tell everyone everything anyways, like whatever, like self-deprecating, I don't care. Like why would I tell everyone everything and keep like the most sacred thing that is yeah. so amazing a secret everybody knew i was drunk right that's true I, it's okay for people to know I'm oh yeah sober. i had like and that is cool i, I always went to, say sobriety is really cool i cool went to are. fox news and like the boss i had so many different bosses and they're like well you know your reputation you have a reputation as a party girl and stuff like that i mean <laughs> and then in high school like i 
basically one like class drunk and thought it was cool. I thought it was cool when I was 21 and I, or under 21 and I had liver damage. I was like, yeah, I'm awesome. Oh yeah, I got <laughs> liver damage, I'm good. <laughs> no, you're gonna have a good life, you know, and your kids. As long as have. I stay sober, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go back to that. But I mean, you're it's, on the track. You do this stuff, and and, and it's, it's and what's so fascinating to me is that like I used to do everything drunk, and I thought I needed to be drunk for everything. Mm -hmm. And now you realize I don't need alcohol in any situation. No. And I'm and the situation nice situ like if I'm asked out to like a twelve hour yacht party where I know everyone's going to be drinking and doing coke all day, like I'm not I'm gonna pass on that one because mm -hmm. like. It would just annoy me, I think, at this point. And not that I would, of course, I wouldn't do anything. I know that. But, like, why even put myself in that situation? I have yacht parties that are sober. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. good person to know. <laughs> yeah. Let me know. Yeah, you can. And the thing about them is they don't usually last 12 hours. Yeah, because everyone's know? like. There are a few hours we go out and have some fun, listen to some music, get on the water. Oh, that sounds And uh, that sounds come in, lovely. and it's all cool. I know. I always say like my I, your definition of fun changes, and for me, like I just want to be on a hammock, in, on a tropical island, reading a book, <laughs> <laughs> having a having an iced coffee. I'm a coffee addict. Just for relaxing, sure. taking it yeah, easy. Yeah, getting then getting a massage. Yeah, you're. Uh, that's good life. Yeah, that's it's good, good life. life. Sure. <laughs> well, I think that. Um, we covered a little bit of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's fun just getting to know you. Oh. The, um, well, I, I love just, I love these type of settings where we, you know, you don't necessarily know the other person's story and then you bounce back and forth on stuff and you realize similarities and, and differences and I don't know. I just, I, I, I love it. It's like we had our own little meeting right now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We can always use one, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you so much for coming <laughs> and being here. It was an honor. It was a pleasure to, to get to spend some time with you. And thank you for sharing your recovery on recovery today.